Survivals here. Today I will show you a war, drama from 2020, titled The 800. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care, in 1937, China is around mid-second, Sino-Japanese conflict. A gathering of, troopers has been given the mission of safeguarding the global settlement of Shanghai, however to arrive at the city, they first need to cross the open country. At the point when they at last arrive at their objective, they previously go over the obliterated and deserted part of town, so the gathering starts talking about how to continue as youthful Xiao Hubei lets his uncle know that his sibling is no more. His sibling is Duan Wu, who has gone investigating to see what's happening. He finds there are Japanese fighters nearby and these warriors see him consequently, so they charge after him and track down the other Chinese soldiers. Duan Wu gets his sibling and his uncle so they can stow away together and escape by sneaking, around through the vestiges of structures while their gathering is killed. At the point when dusks, they arrive at the more pleasant, still possessed piece of Shanghai, just to find the NRA shooting individual Chinese warriors for being miscreants. Terrified of being named weaklings too, they search for one more gathering to participate to cross securely, and at last they find an automatic weapon organization they can join. These warriors are miscreants too. However essentially they are being taken to a Shanghai distribution center where they're required rather than executed. This is the Sihang Stockroom, the last standing fortification among Shanghai and the Japanese armed force. Commandant Zhu Shengzhong is troubled to have weaklings working with him and needs to kill them, yet Lieutenant Colonel Xie Jinyuan lets him know they will require all the assistance they can get, so he sends the fresh debuts to work outside on the fortresses. Duan Wu takes the risk to converse with the colonel and explain he and his family aren't betrayers, simply aspect of the soldiers sent by the Wangpai Central Command that got abandoned, however Jinyuan sends them to work in any case. While the gathering is working outside, one of the fighters sounds the caution, however it's nothing to stress over, it isn't the Japanese that are coming. Simply a gathering of Chinese displaced people heading for the worldwide Shanghai settlement. Duan Wu's uncle slips away the stockroom to go along with them and attempt to enter the security of, the settlement, however at the doors, he isn't permitted to enter in light of the fact that he is wearing an armed force uniform and troopers are not approved to be there. Back in the stockroom, the warriors partake in the wonderful singing from a lady in a structure across the stream while Hubei becomes friends with the main other kid his age in the gathering called Xiao Chiyue. On the top of the stockroom, Chiyue shows Hubei the unmistakable distinction between the universes at the front and the rear of the structure. In the meantime, a gathering of fighters finds an opening in the wall taken cover behind a lot of boxes. At the point when they go through it, they are shocked to find a stable with a white pony still in it. When they open the slow down entryway however, the pony gets frightened and runs out, yet fortunately Chiyue whistles at the pony and quiets it down before it has chance. The following day, Stress assumes control over the regular citizens in the roads when they out of nowhere hear blasts and notice the Japanese have taken over one more structure, waving their banners as an indication of triumph. Thinking the distribution center is low in protection, next the Japanese attempt to assume control over it too, however it is each of the a snare, the Chinese armed force has been stowing away to trap them and figures out how to rapidly overcome them because of the component of shock. Duan Wu's gathering is as yet seen as miscreants however, so they are not permitted to battle. They stand by in a locked room and are possibly let out when the fight is finished. One of them attempts to take off, however he's quickly gone for attempting to abandon once more. Duan Wu joins the warriors in clearing and stealing from the bodies, despite the fact that he wouldn't even play with the possibility of killing any adversary that is as yet alive like the others do. Notwithstanding, there actually are Japanese soldiers outside the stockroom, and they fight back by tossing gas bombs through the windows. All troopers hurry to track down cover, getting towels to pee on them and cover their appearances to safeguard themselves from the gas. Dread and stress make it incomprehensible for Duan Wu to alleviate himself. However fortunately another official loans him his veil. The gas starts to spill out of the structure and arrives at the settlement, causing regular citizens, to frenzy and push each other in the roads while attempting to enter any structure, which demonstrates troublesome on the grounds that proprietors are locking the entryways. At the stockroom, the warriors are beginning to effectively eliminate the gas, yet Duan Wu coincidentally gets pushed over and he falls into an underground waterway he had hardly any familiarity with. He chooses to investigate around a bit, 
and that is the manner by which he finds there's an entry that can undoubtedly be utilized to sneak all through the distribution center. Meanwhile, Mr. Tooth Shingwen, a Chinese writer, moves toward the Japanese armed force to sell them all the data he has about the stockroom troops. This is generally welcomed by Japanese Colonel Kono Aisao, who promptly starts arranging another assault, back in the stockroom, the troopers have made the ways for take out every one of the bodies, which permits the pony to escape and go through the roads. The regular people see it and follow the creature's break, accepting it as a decent sign. This gives a decent interruption from the brutality occurring at the structure the Japanese dominated, they have caught Chinese fighters and are currently showing their bodies on shafts as they request the stockroom troops to give up. Duan Wu is crushed to figure out one of those bodies is his uncle, yet he lacks opportunity and energy to lament since his gathering is accumulated to kill the couple of Japanese detainees they have as a solution to the insulting. The traitors would rather not do this, thinking it is going excessively far, however Commandant Shengzhong shoots one of them and takes steps to do likewise to the others on the off chance that they don't follow orders, the officers start shooting the detainees, yet considerably under danger, Duan Wu can't force himself to make it happen. To save him from winding up dead, one of his bosses gets Duan Wu and reminds him the Japanese killed his uncle, so an irate Duan Wu at long last pulls the trigger. Afterward, when sun sets, Chiyue imparts an exceptional nibble to Hubei while Duan Wu attempts to persuade his bosses to let him and his sibling go in light of the fact that they are simply ranchers that weren't made for this. Since his solicitation is dismissed, Duan Wu chooses to get back to the underground channel to check whether he can get away. Two different weaklings track down him and go along with him, however on out, they find Japanese soldiers slipping in through a similar passage, the threesome stows away submerged against the wall and trusts that the Japanese will cruise by, yet they pause their breathing for such a long time that they lose one of their companions. Duan Wu and his leftover companion rush toward the exit and are seen by regular citizens, so they imagine they aren't getting away and on second thought caution everybody about the Japanese armed force going after. The police turn their lights at the stockroom while the regular citizens raise a caution, and such admonition is a gift from heaven, the Chinese armed force awakens and promptly raises their safeguards, procuring them a triumph with a couple of misfortunes. Outside, the regular people acclaim Duan Wu and his ally for being legends, in any event, motivating three youthful schoolchildren to join the soldiers. However, when they return inside, they are as yet admonished by Colonel Jin Yuan, who suspects what they were really attempting to do while getting into the passages. As discipline, they are conveyed to fix their protections. The following day, regular citizens indeed start overreacting when they notice greater Japanese soldiers are drawing closer. Mr. Tooth exploits his intel to take wagers on the consequences of the approaching fight from outsiders, despite the fact that he doesn't bet himself. A couple of hours after the fact, the Japanese at last come to assault, and the distribution center, troops are soon wrecked to the point that the miscreants, including the siblings and the students, are given weapons and requested to battle. The fight is ruthless and the two sides are losing men at a disturbing rate, so Hubei is giving his all to sneak around and make do. Be that as it may, when he looks through a window and notification the white pony running by, he can't resist the urge to enlighten Chiyue. In the meantime, Hubei is lamenting the deficiency of Chiyue, so Commandant Shengzhong offers him a beverage. Hubei winds up snatching the entire container while he watches the city lights. There is a gift assortment occurring in the roads and each non-military personnel is anxious to team up in the wake of seeing the penances in fight. Not to gamble with another occurrence like the scaffold, this time they slingshot the provisions, arriving at the fighters through the windows of the distribution center. The club proprietor shocks everybody by giving a banner, and a little kid crosses the waterway by swimming to take the banner to the soldiers. Duan Wu sees her and throws a rope through the window to assist her with getting inside. Which makes a secret expert rifleman take shots at him, yet essentially the slug just brushes the neck and presently Hubei considers him a legend. A short time later, Colonel Jin Yuan illuminates his soldiers that the Generalissimo believes them should protect the stockroom for two additional days to acquire overall consideration. Nonetheless, this might actually mean they shouldn't raise the Gave banner since it would insult the adversary, inciting them to battle harder while they come up short on men to counterattack, an enormous contention starts among the fighters and keeping in mind that the responses are blended, the larger part votes in favor of one end, they will raise the banner in any case. The following morning, 
the miscreants are entrusted to raise the banner on the top of the stockroom, which acquires them the cheer of the regular citizens. The Japanese armed force burns through no time in going after, and their military aircraft focus on explicitly focusing on the banner. While the Chinese soldiers are losing numerous men constantly, they actually clutch the banner to keep it up, so the Japanese go to go after the regular people as well. Since there are outsiders there, they get a message saying this might be viewed as a demonstration of battle by different countries. The banner at last falls, and keeping in mind that the Chinese choose to quit going after to stay away from pointless penances, they actually raise the banner once more. Luckily, the Japanese start to withdraw when they get protests from the English, so Duan Wu starts praising their triumph before he understands he has been shot. With his final gasp, he asks Mr. Tooth to snap a photo of him for his sibling. Afterward, while Hubei is indeed watching the city and lamenting another misfortune, the white pony appears and permits him to pet it as solace. That evening, Colonel Jinyuan reenacts an old Chinese story of battle with a guide and a mannequin to help his soldiers to remember the significance of what they're safeguarding. The next day, the English put a Red Cross banner external the settlement to stamp it as a protected zone. Colonel Isao comes over in a dark pony to talk, so Colonel Jinyuan meets him by riding the white pony. It turns out Isao will be supplanted by another colonel soon, and he realizes the Chinese will get requests to withdraw. So for their honor and to be seen less as a disappointment, he demands one final fight. Colonel Jinyuan acknowledges and surges back to the stockroom to prepare the soldiers, concealing under an English banner, the official approaches provide a request to withdraw to the settlement at 12 p.m. This isn't acknowledged by Colonel Jinyuan, who imagines that assuming they keep on battling they might motivate the worldwide local area to help. Unfortunately, the chief definitely realizes no one is coming, after the NRA fell, the remainder of the world lost interest in their contention. The higher-ups have chosen is smarter to acknowledge the misfortune, it could be not respectable yet the country has sufficiently experienced. This upsets Colonel Jinyuan, who thinks these orders make every one of their penances lose their meaning. At the point when sun sets, the searchlights are switched off so the fighters can withdraw through the scaffold, however a little gathering should remain behind to give cover. Mr. Tooth takes pictures and letters from this gathering, promising to bring them back home to their families. While the regular people flood the roads to watch the fighters cross the extension, Hubei chooses to remain behind as one of the protectors. The Japanese before long turn on their own searchlights, terminating a flare to illuminate the region and make it more straightforward for them to go after the fighters on the scaffold. The gathering of workers passes on the stockroom to move toward the Japanese camp trying to dial them back. Yet they rapidly have chance. Regular folks attempt to help also, be by connecting with clinical supplies or shooting with their own weapons from the overhangs of their homes. Gradually, a large portion of the Chinese soldiers are killed, including Colonel Jinyuan, so just a small bunch of men come to the settlement, where the regular folks are connecting with them through the doors, in advanced Shanghai, the white pony rises up out of the remnants of the stockroom. These vestiges are still up as a memory of the penance that permitted China to be the principal landmark for the counter-extremist conflict in the Orient. The Chinese armed force represents 70% of Japanese setbacks in World War II. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this and help the channel grow.